the bug we're talking about today is actual wizard magic, okay? We are talking about a vulnerability that affects every Intel CPU, and it's actually a race condition in the branch prediction hardware of the CPU. If you don't know what any of that means, that's okay. The purpose of this video is to take the paper by the researchers at ETH Zurich and to make the concepts a little more digestible. Now, full disclosure, I am not a CPU microtexture architecture uh, expert, right? I don't think anybody is. I'm not claiming to be. I'm trying to take what I understand about this vulnerability and making it more digestible for the masses, okay? Before we get into that, I do wanna talk about today's video sponsor, me. I honestly believe that if you're a programmer trying to write fast, effective code, or you're a cybersecurity professional trying to stop your stuff from getting attacked, all of these require you to know the basic fundamentals of computers. My courses on the Level Academy teach you languages like C, networking in C, threading in C, assembly, and even a new installment, Rust, to learn the basics of how computers work. And Zero to Hero C programming will teach you the basics of the C programming language, the language that runs all other languages, and you can even learn arrays in C right now for for free, go check that lesson out. If you wanna learn assembly, my arm load operations lesson is also free. And I also have a free three-day C course that you can check out right here on the landing page. Guys, if you want to be a good programmer, you gotta know the fundamentals. And where do you learn the fundamentals? On Low Level Academy. All right, guys, back to the video. See you there. Before we can talk about today's bug, we have to kind of set the stage for how we got here, how these kinds of bugs can even be thought about. All of this type of research, this like CPU microarchitecture attack surface started with the meltdown and specter bugs in 2016. Now I'm sure there was research before these bugs, but these kind of set the stage for, hey, there is a real vulnerability in modern processor architecture and we can exploit it and we're gonna show you how, right? The main bug that we're talking about is meltdown, okay? These bugs dropped in 2016. The idea here is that it broke a fundamental isolation between user space applications and the operating system. If you don't know how this works, in a CPU, there are these things called privilege levels, right? The CPU has different modes of execution that some code runs over here at a lower privilege and some code runs over here at a higher privilege. Now, the code that's running on different privilege levels cannot interact with each other. For example, the program that you're maybe running to watch this video, your Google Chrome browser, cannot reach the memory that the Windows operating system has, right? One is mapped to a high privilege level, the other is mapped to a low privilege level. Now the vulnerability that Meltdown found was because the CPU shares cache between both of those privilege levels, we're able to use what is called a timing side channel attack that can measure the amount of time it takes for a thing to load and use that to leak information from the kernel from within user space. This fundamental vulnerability where cache is shared between privilege levels kind of set the stage for additional attacks that could leverage that vulnerability. Now, after Meltdown and after Spectre, CPU architecture added these uh, mitigations, but CPUs have a lot of hardware. There are lots of places that need to be hardened against these privilege-based attacks or these cache-based side channels. And so the researchers at ETH Zurich found a just, again, I cannot emphasize enough how absolutely magical and mystical this, this attack is. They talk about this thing called branch privilege injection. Now, if you don't know what's happening inside of your CPU, there is a thing called a branch predictor. A branch predictor is trying to figure out based on what is called an indirect branch, meaning a jump or a call that is derived from a register, or it is not known at compile time where it's going to go. That is determined by the, the, the contents of a register. The branch predictor, its job is to try to do some proprietary logic to figure out, hey, I think we're going to go here and insert that prediction into a table. Now these tables are inside this thing called the branch prediction unit of your CPU. This is literally what is doing the logic to try to figure out, hey, our program is running these instructions. We think based off of previous patterns we've seen, this instruction is going to lead to a branch to this location. The whole purpose of this is your CPU is trying to reduce the amount of times that it misses a cache load or that it misses where it thinks it's going to go and reduce the amount of latency it takes to do memory loads. Loading from main memory is extremely slow compared to loading from cache. And if it can guess what needs to be loaded in cache ahead of time, 
there's a lot of potential for time saving that the CPU can buy. And so what's happening is as your CPU is running along, it's running instructions and it's trying to figure out if a call is going to happen, where is that call going to go? If it misses the prediction of the call, it takes the proper result at the end of that branch and it runs and puts that back, puts it into this predictor table so that when it goes to do the branch again, it says, okay, I know that when this instruction happens, I'm going to go over here. Now where things get a little crazy and where the race condition actually comes in. If there is a branch misprediction, right? If there is a miss in the branch prediction unit, what actually ends up happening is the correct data, the correct prediction is not put into the branch prediction table until that branch prediction retires, until that branch closes, right? Until the, the thread of execution is finished. But what if a thread, a user mode process, that has conducted a sequence of instructions that will cause an entry in the branch prediction table makes a syscall. The syscall being the instruction that changes the, the CPU's execution mode from unprivileged to privileged. What they found is that there is a race condition in the hardware such that if they call a syscall from user mode, but they've timed the branch long enough that it waits to do the insertion until after it gets into kernel mode, it will insert a privileged branch prediction instruction in the branch predictor. So what this means is that when the kernel is separately running, they can control where the speculative execution engine will go by changing the prediction. So what this means is that they can, from user mode, do a set of training runs that train the branch predictor to take certain branches and calling syscall. Because of that race condition, they can arbitrarily insert branch prediction results into the privileged version of the branch predictor uh, lookup table. And then when the kernel goes to run certain instructions, they can control where in the kernel the code goes, right? So for example, in the kernel, they have this function for Huffman uh, compression tables. And what they're able to do is take where the kernel thinks it's supposed to go and have it speculatively run these instructions. Now, even though the kernel is not actually running those instructions, it is running them speculatively, which means that the CPU is running ahead to try to order the data, to try to pull the data into cache. And because of that, they can use what is called a disclosure gadget to properly load the cache with privileged information and then do the flush and reload method that is described in Spectre and Meltdown to reveal that information. And so by leveraging all these things, they were able to leak the base address of the kernel, which is bypassing kernel ASLR, and then leak Etsy shadow out of kernel memory by tricking the kernel's speculative engine to going places that it's not supposed to go. Watch this. So what they just did here is they broke kernel ASLR, right? They use this method of leaking information to leak the offset of the kernel. And then from there, they're able to use this method to leak an arbitrary amount of data from the base of the kernel up to the top of the kernel. And they're searching for the contents of Etsy shadow, which is loaded into memory by the kernel. It's like, like what? Like what, what, do, what did you just say to me? Like, it's just, it's insane, dude. And as usual, guys, go check out the research. I linked the paper in the description below. Go read that paper. I recommend you print it out. Like, go print it and read it. It's a good read. Uh, and then also, if you're going to Black Hat 2025, they will be giving a presentation on this vulnerability at Black Hat. I'm sure they're going to describe it way, way better than, than I am. Anyway, guys, for now, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, I have a video on an arm bug that's actually pretty similar that I made about a year ago. It's pretty cool. Go check it out. If you don't, no kiss for you.